It's an election year, the economy struggle is in the air and everywhere, and I haven't thought much about this National Association of Realtors lawsuit in recent months, but I'm seeing the effects of change on the horizon. To keep our affiliation with the Association of Realtors, brokers all over the U.S. are implementing new standards of practice that will affect you as a consumer, a buyer, or a seller, landlord, or a tenant. So today we're going to talk about a couple of big changes that you should expect. Don't go anywhere. What's up? My name is Joshua Smith. I'm with the Home Agent Group. I want to talk to you about what you're up to and how we can expand together. I'm going to be honest with you, and you didn't cut this. <laughs> That's the highlight of our entire trip. This is a serious matter for you as a consumer because as brokers, as a result of the lawsuit, if we want to remain compliant and protect ourselves from problems related to broker commissions, keep you safe, we have to abide by a couple new rules. Now, if you haven't been following the lawsuit or the results of the lawsuit, I've provided some links in the description of this video on YouTube you can go to to answer any questions that you may have and dive in as deep as you'd like into that rabbit hole if you wish. But suffice it to say, the intent of the lawsuit was to decouple the commissions being paid to buyer's agents and seller or listing agents. Meaning the whole point was to make it so that it's clear that there is no requirement of the seller to pay a commission to both their agent and the buyer's agent. Now you may already be reeling with ideas about how this might impact you, but sit with me. There are really only a couple of things to be made aware of in practice in terms of how this has changed some of the industry standards. The first major change is that offers of compensation will be prohibited on MLSs. The MLS or multiple listing service is where homes are listed and then distributed to Zillow and Realtor.com or any other syndication feed where you can browse homes for sale. Agents will be able to negotiate compensation, as it has always been, and sellers can offer compensation to buyer's agents, but this won't be a standard any longer. What you should be looking for are words like buyer concessions or buyer premiums. Concessions are those things that sellers can offer or buyers can ask for that might be an incentive to help seal the deal. For example, sellers might offer 3% of the purchase price toward buyer concessions, which can be used in many ways toward closing costs, prepaids, and allowable lender expenses. This gets a little bit muddy when a lender is involved because they can actually help pay for many things in the purchase. But if you have to pay your own buyer agency fee, the lender will expect or may expect you to do this separately from their potential cash needs like a down payment or closing costs associated with the loan. Your pre-approval is going to be determined upon whether or not you can pay for these things. Now, buyer premiums are added to the purchase price. So if the listing says home offered at X price plus 4% buyer premium, this means that you're going to be asked to pay 4% of the purchase price on top of the purchase price. This is something that you would more often see at a real estate auction but I do think that we'll see more of this type of marketing language to try to solicit interest from a wider pool of buyers. I'm seeing it already in listings that aren't at auction, but maybe offering a home at a discount. So if you see this and you do the math and the premium plus the closing costs are just more cash than you have, well, there are a number of ways to get the numbers to balance. The premium, for example, could be added to an offer amount with a request for the seller to pay it instead. I'm not saying it's going to work every time, but it is a way to try to find a deal that works. Now, the second major change is that agents working with a buyer will need to enter into a written agreement before touring any homes. I think most agents that work with buyers, myself included, have toured homes before entering into an agency agreement in the past. In fact, it's commonplace for buyers to just reach out to the listing agent on a property or any, any agent for that matter, just to see something that they like, especially when the buyer is early in the hunt. But let's take a sidebar just for buyers right now. If you're not a buyer, you can jump ahead about a minute. As a buyer, there are two things that I recommend to help put you in the best position possible in this new generation of real estate. First, as you look for homes, even when you're early on, be thinking about and looking for an agent that best suits you. Chances are how they present themselves online in advertising, etc. Well, that's how they're going to be in real life. Call agents that you think you may like to work with to ask questions about their process and how they work with clients. When you know someone in the market you're looking in, it'll be easier to enter into this newly required agreement. 
The second thing, and this can happen first, because any agent you talk to should advise this, but you should put in a loan application to get a pre-qualification. This isn't a pre-approval. They're going to do more of a soft pull on your credit, and I would make it clear to a lender you don't want them to do a hard pull on your credit yet if you're wanting to avoid the ding to your credit score. Most agents also have a handful of lenders that you work with, so again, this could come in second uh, to finding an agent. They can help you out in that process. All right, so how is this going to impact the market? What should we expect for home prices, property values? What are the rates gonna do? Well, this has implications far beyond just the real estate market and negotiations and business practice between agents and consumers. Lenders are looking at any and all ways possible to help finance buyer concession needs to help anticipate the limitations that this can set on affordability. Unfortunately, I just don't have an answer to any of that really yet. But the general consensus with agents I've spoken with is expect things to be more business as usual than totally changed. As a consumer though, the more educated that you can be on how real estate transactions work, what you should expect to pay when you buy a house or sell a house, the better your chances of success in any transaction that you make. If you're looking for content like this, you wanna educate yourself on how all this works, subscribe to my channel and look through past videos, turn on those notifications for new videos. I will be talking about things like that, doing more videos like this. Ask any and all questions that you have in the comments in the video below, or just give me a call. I'll be here all week. Talk to you soon.